Justices, clerks, and staff have prized and protected the court's confidentiality. The justices must be able to discuss and deliberate in an environment of total trust and privacy. Americans cannot receive a fair trial if politicians, pundits, bullies, and mobs get a say in court. Judicial independence is vital, but the far left has spent years shamelessly attacking it. Democrats in Congress have endorsed plans for partisan court packing. They've sent the justices threatening legal briefs. They've scheduled sham hearings to smear judges. In 2020, the Senate Democratic leader marched across the street to the court and shouted threats, threats, at multiple justices by name if they didn't rule how he wanted. In 2018, activists literally chased senators around the Capitol. And now, last night, a shocking, shocking new breach. Somebody, likely somebody inside the court itself, leaked a confidential internal draft to the press, almost certainly in an effort to stir up an inappropriate pressure campaign to sway an outcome. The radical left immediately rallied around the toxic stunt. The cheerleaders for partisan court packing applauded what they suggested was the work of, quote, a brave clerk making a last-ditch Hail Mary attempt to cause a political firestorm and cause the court to reconsider. Liberals want to rip the blindfold off Lady Justice. They want to override impartiality with intimidation. They want to elevate mob rule over the rule of law. The same political movement that used a leak to move up the timeline of Justice Breyer's retirement process is trying to use yet another leak to make the court less secure and less impartial. Never before, never before in modern history has an internal draft been leaked to the public while the justices were still deciding a case. Never before. Whoever committed this lawless act knew exactly what it could bring about. The justices already require security. Less than two weeks ago, an unbalanced person lit himself on fire on the court steps. Less than three years ago, a liberal mob tried to storm the court, shoving past law enforcement and pounding on the doors. <clears throat> Look, everybody knows what kind of climate the far left is trying to fuel. One that is antithetical, antithetical to the rule of law. <clears throat> right on cue, top Democrats began publishing wild statements about what the court might decide, packed with using unhinged rhetoric that could easily incite light a match. <coughs> so what else happened? Activists flocked to the court. An angry crowd surrounded the court, chanting justices' names. There were renewed calls to smash the institutions of both the Senate and the court at the same time. One of the court's most essential and sacred features was smashed just to buy the outrage industrial complex a few extra days to scream nonsense about what the court might rule. 
This lawless action should be investigated and punished to the fullest extent possible. The fullest extent possible. I'm certain the Chief Justice will seek to get to the bottom of this. If a crime was committed, the Department of Justice must pursue it completely. So listen, I want all nine justices to know there are still principal senators who have their backs no matter what. There are still some people in this Capitol and a majority in the Senate whose support for the rule of law is not conditional, not conditional. The court should tune out the bad faith noise and feel completely free to do their jobs. They should follow the facts and the law wherever that leads. As I've warned in the past, courts bowing to activist pressure would never enhance judicial legitimacy. It could only erode it. And the hostage takers would never settle for half a loaf. Now, Mr. President, on another matter, an unfortunate routine keeps playing itself out with the Biden administration. First, they implement bad policies that create problems. Then they propose solutions that are really just more bad ideas. Case in point is inflation. Democrats spent last spring unleashing a deluge of reckless spending on our recovering economy. They spent the rest of the year trying to pull off yet another taxing and spending spree. And now they want to pass a massive tax hike while families <clears throat> are already hurting. Unfortunately for the American people, the same thing is playing itself out in the world of energy policy. Since day one, the Biden administration has done its best to wage holy war on American domestic energy production. The predictable result, thanks to these policies and the broader inflation that Democrats have fueled, is that American families are hurting badly.